Good morning, and welcome to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. I am located at 1563 Main Street in Peckville, and I'm here every Sunday from 8 to 9 a.m. on these stations to bring you, the landowner, valuable information that you need regarding natural gas development here in Pennsylvania. Again, here every Sunday from 8 to 9 a.m. Been doing the show since August of 2010 and coming up on our five-year anniversary. So, very excited about that. Um, just so you know, at the Clark Law Firm, my focus is landowner negotiation. Not company, uh, no pipelines, no gas line companies, never have, never will. I focus on landowner negotiations for such items as oil and gas leases. Been doing a lot more oil and gas lease work. A lot of activity uh, with oil and gas leases now where leases are expiring, uh, on the verge of expiring. People entered into five years ago, seven years ago, uh, maybe even 10 years ago, and they haven't been developed. So we're seeing leases that are expiring now. I've seen a lot of top lease offers, which we've talked about before. Uh, seeing amendments and modifications and extension requests for existing oil and gas lease. So I've been doing a lot of work on that recently. So we're seeing a lot of leases cycling through, pipeline agreements. You know, I've done so many shows on pipelines and uh, haven't done one in a little while. And I'm probably, I'm not gonna discuss pipelines really today. But if you have a pipeline agreement, let me just say, please call somebody. Call me, call somebody. Uh, I may touch a little bit. You know, you know, I'm gonna just, I will break a little bit and just say, uh, there's some areas now and what we see is we can look in some areas where we're seeing development which is far more advanced. What do I mean by that? Well, we're seeing in some areas where there's a lot of wells drilled, there's a solid pipeline infrastructure in place, and gas is being produced, it's being uh, delivered to the market, and landowners are seeing royalties. Now, we're seeing a many, many, many other areas where parcels are leased, but we're not seeing that production or that activity. Now, we can take some counties, and just as an example, in the Northeast, Susquehanna County, it's pretty advanced in development. Bradford, pretty advanced in development. Still still ongoing. Uh, still doing pipeline agreements all the time in the Northeast, uh, but these, this development is ongoing, and it's much more advanced than we start looking at staying in the Northeast, say, Potter County. And then we can go, you know, when we go to the West, we can talk Armstrong County, um, Westmoreland County, all, all the counties, and we could talk Western counties as well. But the point is, is what's really nice for you as the landowner, if you're in an area that's not advanced in the development, and I'm going to talk about Tioga County for a second, but this could apply to many other counties. So here you are in Tioga County, and you're not seeing a lot of actual production. We're starting to see more and more activity, and we're going to see more and more activity, but we're not actually seeing a lot of royalty owners uh, receiving royalty payments yet. Hopefully, we're going to see that soon, but as of right now, uh, it's not as advanced as some other areas in the state, like, for example, Susquehanna and Bradford. So, what does that mean? Well, what it means is, is when you're a landowner out in Tioga County and you're presented with a pipeline right-of-way agreement, maybe you're presented with a roadway agreement, a storage agreement, uh, you know, we can pick them all, even if it's a gas lease or an extension agreement. But let's say you're approached with a pipeline right-of-way agreement and you're in Tioga County. Well, we have in front of us or behind us, whichever way we want to look at it, we have a body of history that we can look at and say, okay, how did companies handle this situation in Susquehanna and Bradford? How did they make their offers? Did they start high and then reduce them? Did they start low and make them better? You know, what is this information? We kind of have this bank of information that we can look back on and help the landowners in these areas and say, hey, look, uh, and sometimes it's the same exact company. We can say, look, this company in Bradford County or Susquehanna County, here is how they operated. This is the history. We can look at and say, look, uh, with these pipeline agreements, Here's the thing, you know, certainly, generally, companies don't come in and give the highest offers, especially in pipeline agreements. So what do we see? We see that typically the company's going to go out. And ladies and gentlemen, 
this is <laughs> this is very very true and apparently somewhat of a secret out there uh, to the landowners so pay attention please and I mean that very respectfully uh, what we see is is the landman they go out there the company goes out there send the landman and they're going to start with the lowest possible offer to try to get people to sign and in fact I reviewed an agreement recently where the offer was five dollars per foot for a pipeline right away agreement to me that is insane in Pennsylvania in these days and times that's crazy and if my client were inclined to sign that I actually would have told him or her uh, that I'm not interested in representing them if that's what they want to sign because I think that's a really poor deal uh, and I just think it's a bad situation and and actually you know the amount of money you're gonna get and the amount of time that it would take to work in this it just doesn't even add up and make sense uh, even at fifteen dollars you know I personally think fifteen dollars is way too low to enter into pipeline right-of-way agreements in Pennsylvania in the vast majority of cases Remember, all this information is always in general and never meant to be any specific information or direction for any specific circumstance. I am Attorney Doug Clark. You're listening to All Things Marcellus. I'm here every Sunday from 8 to 9 on these stations. And we're talking about, you know, I wasn't going to talk about pipeline agreements, and here I go. But this is important. I mean, this is just super important because in Tioga County, is just an example. But look, don't think, well, I'm not in Tioga County. Hey, if you're in Potter County, you're in Armstrong County, you're in Westmoreland County, I don't care what county that you're in, this same idea applies. What does the company do? They go out there and they want to sign pipeline agreements at the lowest possible rate. Well, doesn't that make sense? Well, of course it does. So they want to say to you as the landowner, well, hey, uh, we need to get these gas lines in the ground. We need to get your royalties. And all they're going to do is try to put your eyes and focus on future royalties, future royalties, 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 because... A lot of people, when they see these visions of royalties in their, in their eyes and in their minds, they're ready to sign anything. Companies know that. You know, they've been doing this for years, so that's what you're going to be focusing on. You want the landowner to be thinking about future riches, which may or may, never ha may, or may not happen, but that's what you want them to be thinking about. So you're going to focus on that. So they're going out there and say, they say, oh, we're going to give you $14, $15 a foot, say. And we're going to preach to them, oh, well, this is how we're going to get royalties. This is what the market is. This is what we paid your neighbors. Uh, think about that, how that worked with the gas leases. We got guys signing $50, $60, and a year later, signing for $6,000 per acre. $50 to $6,000 per acre. They didn't say to these people, oh, yeah, we're going to give you the same as the neighbors, because they couldn't. Why couldn't they? Because people got wise so ladies and gentlemen please let's get wise here uh, just because other people have signed bad agreements and the first people who sign are going to sign bad agreements so as a company how easy is this you sit back in your boardrooms your conference rooms and you say okay let's go out there what's the minimum price we can get people to sign ten dollars fifteen fourteen whatever that case may be we'll go out there and you're going to have a group of people who will sign anything they'll sign anything you put in front of them if you tell them that it's going to make them money and we understand that uh, but it's probably not the right thing to do um, because a lot of times it's not going to make you money um, but other times you know you can be giving up tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of dollars in compensation and future royalties may not actually occur or occur anywhere near to the degree that you think so okay go out there company you say I'm gonna give you fourteen fifteen dollars a foot and you get this group of people to sign so then now you have this group of people that are gonna sign right away well you continue to talk to the other landowners and you say well this is what we're paying everybody this is what everybody signed for this is what your neighbor signed for sometimes they'll even point to a large landowner in the area and say oh that's what mister Jones signed for and then that gets another group of people. Well, that's all they're going to pay. That's all they're going to pay. And then those people sign. Well, sooner or later, and ladies and gentlemen, I'm trying to make this sooner. We want to make this sooner for you as the landowner. What's going to happen is people are going to stop signing at 14 and 
It's going to happen. It happened in every other place that I've seen where it's advanced, and I strongly believe uh, it's going to happen in Tioga, Potter, and all these other counties where they're paying $15 or less or in that range. And quite frankly, even if it's $25, we see those numbers go higher in areas where the development is advanced. So, okay, so what do we got then? So we have the landowner out there. They're going to stop signing because they, they pick the low-hanging fruit, if you will. The people who are just going to sign. Then there's other people who don't sign right away but can be convinced, well, this is what we're paying. This is what your neighbor signed. So go ahead. We want you to sign this. This is what we're going to do. And then they sign as well. Now the company has this third group of people who wise up and say, you know, I just don't think that's enough money or I don't want the pipeline. And then we start to see those prices go up. Uh, you know, we see them go up 15 to $25, you know, $30 in that type of range. And then again, once they go up, you got a whole new group of people that says, okay, that's much better, and they're going to sign. And you go, it's the same type of process, but at just a different level. We have the, say, we'll say there's the $15 level where you go through this process, then you run out of people to sign, then they raise it across the board to $25 or $30 in that range. Then you're going to have people who say, well, that's significantly higher, maybe even double. All right, I'm going to go ahead and sign. Then you're going to have some other people who are going to wait, and again, after a while, they're going to say, okay, well, it looks like that's the price. I'm going to go ahead and sign. Then there's going to be that other group that still says, hey, I don't think that is enough. Uh, and if I'm going to do this, I'm going to require more compensation. And you know what happens if the company needs them and they don't have the rights under the gas lease. And usually they don't. Usually the company does not have the right under the gas lease to lay most of the lines that I see. Well, then those landowners can get much higher prices. Many clients, many clients, we, we throw the foot per foot numbers out the window, you know, 50, 100, $200 per foot. You know, those numbers can go out the window. What we're talking about is significant compensation because the company really needs the pipeline right away agreement and they're going to pay for it. And listen, they're not going broke. They are not going broke. They can afford to pay it. It's what the market is, and my problem that I have now is that I just am seeing way too many people in areas like Tioga County, Potter County, and the list can go on and on, who are signing these really low compensation agreements. Very low, in my opinion, way too low, and they have lengthy options, meaning that the company loves to say, too, well, you got to hurry up and sign because we want to get you royalties. Well, read the document a lot of times it says that the company has three to five years to even decide if they want to use the agreement and then often they have even a longer period of time to actually install the pipeline so if the company is saying oh hurry up and sign hurry up and sign because we want to get this gas to market say okay I'll sign but I want you to do this construction within one year well, well we have a well, we can't do that we can't do that well you just told me there's this big rush to get this gas to market, but you won't commit to actually installing this pipeline in the next year or even two years. How about that? So please, guys, um, think about this. Uh, people are going to sign. People are going to sign bad agreements. And also, it's not just about money either. One of the things I talk to clients about all the time is whenever that company is approaching you in an area that's not been exposed to a lot of pipeline uh, right-of-way activity and negotiations. Think about this. What we just talked about was money, compensation. They're not going to lead high and they're not going to increase your offer whenever other people are still signing at say 14 or 15 dollars per foot. And they're not going to do it because if they give you 25 or 30 or more, well if that word gets out there's a new bar for the low price. So they're not going to give you a higher price now. So what do you do? You sit and wait. You sit and wait in most cases. Uh, again, remember, you have to understand your case. But in most cases, my advice and recommendation is let's sit down and wait and let these numbers climb and let's see how this thing plays out. Uh, okay, so we have that. Now, that's the money side, but there's the other side. There's a side about the terms. Uh, can we limit them to one pipeline? Can we limit the area of activity? All kinds of terms. I could talk shows and shows and shows about what type of additional language. Well, again, if you sign early, 
they're not going to give you addendum terms and added terms that have a lot of bite to them, that have some power and mean something to the landowner. Why? Because just like money, if that information gets out, oh yeah, I agreed to only one pipeline, they have to pay me at least double for a second pipeline, or I get to renegotiate the second pipeline, well, everybody's going to want that same term. So when you're signing early, when you're signing these pipeline option agreements early, as a general rule, from what I see, you're probably getting burned. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. I'll be back after this break, and I am not going to talk about pipelines anymore today, I don't think. I'll be right back. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Again, I, I started to say, you know, I represent landowners, only land owners. Uh, no companies, never have, never will. Uh, pipeline agreements, water line agreements, gas leases, royalty and royalty deduction issues, unitization issues. Is your property properly unitized? Uh, we also do, I do surface use agreements, uh, meter site agreements, uh, any and all representation related to natural gas development. Also, more and more estate planning I'm doing for clients who are starting to get royalties, clients who have signed leases, getting bonus money, uh, or none of the above. You know, uh, if you're if you're out there and you signed a lease, you're in the gas area, you, know, you have some special considerations and concerns, and you want to make sure that you get the right estate plan for you and your family. I say this all the time because it's so true. Uh, you don't want the plan for your neighbor. Everybody's in a different circumstance. You need to get the estate plan that's right for you and your family, not somebody else. Uh, if you ever want to contact me directly, you can always call the office at 570-307-0702. It's 570-307-0702. Check out the websites, pagasleaseattorney.com, pagasleaseattorney.com attorney.com, pipelineattorney.com. I believe great landowner information available there. If you're thinking about representation, check out the website also. Learn more about me, about the Clark Law Firm, what we do. Check out the landowner testimonials. We're very proud of those. I think we're well over 100 landowner testimonials now. You know, I was talking about pipelines the first segment. Uh, I think we've hit now 50 or more pipeline uh, company companies companies, different companies that I've negotiated and worked on pipeline agreements with across Pennsylvania, which gives you the idea of what's going on out there, but also gives you the idea of how much there is an opportunity to learn what these different companies do, how they operate, watch the evolution in one county, um, see how that's playing out in another, and use all of that information to benefit you, the landowner. That's what we want to do. We need more on the landowner side. You know, these companies have been doing this for decades and decades across the country, and Pennsylvanians are dealing with this the first time. And I always just, it just it kills me when I hear, well, my neighbor did this, or my neighbor said this, my neighbor said this. You know, I've talked at the beginning, I've been doing the show almost, almost five years now. Um, think about, and I do this every day, uh, where how much information, and what I, I still continue to learn. So when you talk about, well, this one person did one thing one time, uh, I assure you this is so complicated and there are so many loopholes and so many traps for the landowners that have been developed over time by the companies. And I talk about those all the time on the radio show. You know, I talked about two website, pagasleaseattorney.com, and doing the show, it'll be five years in August, uh, you can go to pagasleaseattorney.com, check out, we have the archived shows, uh, have a bunch of them uh, archived and available up on the website at pagasleaseattorney.com, so if you miss any of today's show, you want to go back and listen to other shows, they're all, well, not not all five years, we got a bunch available there, many hours to uh, keep you busy on one of these nice beautiful sunny Pennsylvania afternoons you can go and, and listen to the radio show on the internet maybe sitting by the pool 
uh, whatever the case may be. Uh, also, you can follow me on Twitter at Doug Clark Law. I try to tweet uh, articles when I come across things which I think will be interesting to Pennsylvania landowners. So again, you're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark from the Clark Law Firm, and we're going to switch gears. I want to talk about um, it's a couple things. I'm going to talk about a little bit about uh, selling your oil and gas rights, but not just that. There's going to be a couple different ways that this comes into play. Um, you know, I've talked about selling oil and gas rights many times in the past. My general advice is to be unbelievably slow to make that decision because I believe that rarely, rarely I believe that that's going to be the best decision for a landowner. However, everybody is in a different circumstance. So sometimes it will make sense. But I think that the times where it makes sense is much more limited than certainly uh, what the people on the other side who want to buy your oil and gas rights, how they want to present it. You know, anytime I have that discussion with somebody who's on the other side, they immediately want to start saying, well, this scenario, this scenario, this scenario, this scenario. Well, of course, that's what you're going to say because you're trying to buy these oil and gas rights. Please be very slow to do that. Very, very slow. Um, often, and you know, one of the things that I do a lot of times now, um, and more than what I even used to do, I'll do like these consultations, which usually take an hour, maybe two, um, for such items like say you say, uh, I'm thinking about selling my oil and gas rights. Well, you know what? Maybe it's worth sending me uh, your agreement, your sales agreement, you know, what you have, what your offer is, where the property is, let me see your lease. Let's have a consultation, take an hour and two. Let's talk about our or two. Let's talk about the offer. Let's talk about my experiences. Let's talk about um, why you may want to do this, and let's talk about why you may not want to. And then at the end, if you decide to move forward, hey, that's great. Uh, but you've seen some things, and I've had these consultations, and, and a lot of times the client landowner decides, hey, you know what, I, I don't think this is what I want to do. Um, sometimes they do. They decide, uh, okay, yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and move forward, but every single consultation that I have on this and many other issues, though, but saying sticking here, uh, the landowner certainly gets a lot more perspective. I've never had anyone say, boy, I wish I wouldn't have done that. Generally speaking, it's always, wow, uh, I hadn't thought about those things. I'm really glad that we had this conversation. So if you decide to do this, well, and you decide to sell your oil and gas rights, well, you're making an informed decision with a much better picture and understanding of what you're doing and what you may expect in the future and also to understand the pitfalls or potential problems. And, you know, this is something we're talking about selling your oil and gas rights forever forever so to take an hour or two of time and i'm not trying to sell you on this i'm trying to say that you need as a landowner if you're making this big decision to separate these rights forever you need to understand what you're doing and you need it's worth the small investment to figure out uh, is this what i want to do um, is am i thinking about everything so i can't even begin to recommend that enough not being about a commercial here, um, but just think about it. If you're talking about selling the gas rights underneath your property to some company, typically you know an LLC incorporated in some other state, uh, that's a big deal where they're incorporated. But what we're talking about is selling your rights forever. You need to take a little bit of time and make sure you understand what you're doing. And boy, you certainly don't want to be listening to the guy who's trying to broker that sale. You know, these guys who are out there communicating with you, one of the things that we see all the time is you'll be contacted by a landman or you'll receive something in the mail. They want to buy your gas rights. Well, this one company's name, say it's company ABC, who's having all this contact of the guys talking to you about company A, B, and C. Now, when it comes time uh, to actually start signing documents, all of a sudden, company A, B, and C may not even be on those documents. Now it's company XYZ. Well, you got these guys, they're essentially working as brokers, and they probably make, I don't know, but I, I think it might be a profitable business. So you go out there, you get a landowner with 100 acres, and you say, okay, hey, yeah, we want to sell you, or we want to purchase these gas rights, and I'll make up something here. Say we want to purchase them at $2,500 per acre. Well, 
they get a commitment from you as the landowner to do that. Well, now what do they do? Well, maybe they go out and they start shopping around everywhere they can to see what company will give the highest price for these gas rights. So maybe there's a company out there willing to pay five or three thousand dollars. So that broker says, "All right, well, you can buy these gas rights for twenty five hundred. You know that other or per acre. You know the other five hundred per acre." Maybe that's going to turn into some sort of compensation for that broker. So, you know, it's an opportunity for some people to make a lot of money. And what I'm concerned about is the potential for the landowner to lose a lot of money and potential income. You got to understand these. There's a lot of things going on behind the scenes that I don't know that any regular landowner out there has any idea. And look, first time for me i didn't understand at all you know when this first started but now we've seen all kinds of different companies how they operate i've been involved in sales i've represented people who are selling oil and gas rights they're doing it when they're fully informed and making the decision that that's the right move for them i may even disagree with that decision i'll explain it to the client what my opinion is but it's always the client's opinion and look if you're going to do something and I say this too, uh, if you're going to do something, maybe I don't even, di- I don't agree with what you're doing, but if you're going to do it, let's make sure that you do it right. Let's make sure that you're protected. And in sale, oil and gas right sales, I don't care, pipeline agreements, I mean, you name it, any of them. If you're going to do it, do it right. I am attorney Doug Clark. You're listening to All Things Marcellus. We're here every Sunday from 8 to 9 on these stations. You can also Check out PA Gas Lease Attorney.com, Pipeline Attorney.com on PA Gas Lease Attorney.com tomorrow morning, Monday morning. We will have this show up and ready to go. You can listen to it in its entirety at PA Gas Lease Attorney.com. And you can always contact me, 570 307 0702. All right, you know, going to continue on this gas rights. Here's something that happened. You know, one of the things. And there's so many little tricks and traps in this. So many. You know, I started to think about, I had this rush on me here a second ago thinking, oh my gosh, uh, I only have a little more than half a show left and I could do five shows on this. So just want to highlight some items here. And this wasn't, again, my intention on this, but, you know, one of the things that we see and something that's popped up recently that I had with the client, well, it was a landowner who called and we tried to help him out, but uh, unfortunately, there's nothing, you know, sometimes after the fact, there's nothing we can do to help. Um, it's critical that you get that help before you sign these agreements and before you sign, because afterwards, rarely is there anything that can be done. One of the things, and I stress this, just one, 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 because there are so many other concerns, so many. One concern is that these agreements, the purchase oil and gas rights, but at the same time, guys, pipeline agreements have the same language. Gas lease agreements have the same language. Almost all those natural gas agreements out there have this same language that say to the effect that the company who's going to give you this money, they have the ability to pay that money towards your mortgage or any other lien or taxes that you have out there. Think about that. You sign an agreement, you think you're going to get, make it simple, $100,000. And what if that company says, well, you have a $150,000 mortgage, so we're going to pay that $100,000 to your mortgage, not to you. Now, what I saw recently was a landowner started getting royalty checks, and those royalty checks were sent to the landowner in the landowner's name, but also the mortgage company's name on the check. So the landowner cannot sign that check and deposit into their account unless the mortgage company also signs. So that payment is being made. Imagine that, let's say again, so you're gonna do your gas rights, you're selling them for $100,000, and all of a sudden, that $100,000 check comes to you but also you and the name of your bank. So we'll I'll pick PNC Bank. Uh, comes check comes to you and in the name of PNC Bank, and you're not going to be able to deposit that in your account. So now you have an issue. Another thing, and I've talked about this too. Another thing you have to watch out for: if you have a mortgage on your property and you're looking to sell your oil and gas rights, 
you better go look at your mortgage because a lot of these mortgages will have acceleration clauses which would say that if you do something like this and it doesn't say this exactly but the idea is that if you engage in this type of transaction your mortgage may be accelerated to become due immediately you have to look at these things again not specific advice for any individual but you need to specific advice for everybody you need to if you're gonna go sell your oil and gas rights get your mortgage documents you need to find out can you do it what do you have to do and in most cases you're gonna wanna get your bank's approval to sign off to make sure there's not gonna be a problem we deal with this all the time in these cases and if you have a mortgage there's a darn good chance you need to do something about it that you need to make sure that the bank is gonna be okay with it and you're not gonna have a problem because you don't wanna get involved in a situation where you're selling your gas rights because you know in most cases you're looking for that lump sum payment and all of a sudden that lump sum payment never actually makes it to you but it goes towards taxes mortgage whatever that case may be i am attorney doug clark you're listening to all things marcellus here every sunday from 8 to 9 a.m on these stations and i'm going to be right back after this break welcome back to all things marcellus with me attorney doug clark of the clark law firm you can always contact my office 570-307-0702 it's 570-307 0702. I'm here every Sunday, 8 to 9 a.m. in these stations. You miss any of today's show, any other show. Uh, well, we don't have them all archived, but you can go back to pagasleaseattorney.com. pagasleaseattorney.com. Check out that site. Check out pipelineattorney.com. Great information available for you, the landowner. We'll have today's show up on pagasleaseattorney.com tomorrow, Monday morning. Okay, I'm talking about oil and gas right sales, and you know there, there are so many. Like I said, there's so many issues with these things. I'll tell you a little story. I had a client come to me, a landowner came to me last year, came and said, you know, this company wants to buy my oil and gas rights, saying that they're in such this big hurry, they want to get it signed before Christmas. So I said, okay, well, you know, let's talk about this. And we had these discussions and he sent me, the client sent me the gas lease, the sales agreement. And we're really uh, discussing all of these and I'm pointing out to him all of the different serious concerns that I have about this transaction. And he understands these things, but he's, you know, wants to get this money. Uh, his property was actually starting to go into production and we knew this, but he wasn't seeing royalties yet. And I was very, very uncomfortable with this transaction. Um, but he ultimately decided that he wanted to go through the transaction and he was going to go through it then on his own. I was not going to represent him in the transaction, which again is fine. Uh, and you know, certainly he can end up making that decision. However, just recently, uh, it's my understanding that um, he's having a problem because the company has actually not paid him um, yet. Now, hopefully they will, but they haven't paid him yet. And what we have here is all, a lot of these agreements, and, and most of these agreements that I see to purchase oil and gas rights, they have so many loopholes built into them for the companies who are going to buy the oil and gas rights. So it's not uncommon to see something like when you sign that sales agreement, essentially the effective date, the effective date of the sale may be the date that you sign that agreement. I'll give you an example. Say you sign the agreement on January 1st. Well, you have an agreement that says that this closing may have to occur within, say, nine, we'll say uh, within three months uh, or maybe even six months. We'll, we'll use both of them. So you sign on January 1st. Well, you're not selling these rights until three months later. Well, what happens is, is during that three month period, these sales agreements will say that the company gets to go out and check the title, but they, they don't just limit it to title usually. They have these management approvals uh, that things have to be approved, which is this very, very gray, uh, in most cases, they can reject it for any reason, in my opinion. Um, so what they can do is, is they have this three month period well, normally there's a there's ways for them to extend it. So they'll say, well, we need to close this in three months. However, uh, if it's still under review, we can extend it. And sometimes it's very vague language and sometimes it's more clear that they can extend these agreements for much longer. Well, here's an enormous problem for the landowner. You sign this 
on January 1st. And it says that once the sale takes effect, it takes effect as of January 1st. However, you're not selling it. You're not literally getting your money then. You have a closing date for the actual sale transaction maybe three or six months into the future. So if gas is being produced on January 1st and it's being produced say three or six months before the sale is finalized, everybody I talk to, a regular landowner thinks, well, I'm gonna get all my royalties at least until the date this sale is finalized. However, I don't know if I've seen an agreement that didn't say that from the date that you signed the sales agreement, that's when the person or company buying your gas rights, that's when the clock starts ticking. So if there were $10,000 in royalties that accumulated between January 1st and the date of sale, almost every agreement with the company is going to say that the company gets that $10,000. Well, I'm concerned as a lawyer representing landowners, I'm concerned that, hey, here you are as a company, you have this very vague uh, landowner, I'm sorry, management approval, a very vague concept here. So what happens if all of a sudden now you sign on January 1st and this management, this, it's always funny, this magical management people, uh, this management out there, well, they're watching to see how productive these wells are or this well is going to be. And if the well isn't very good, then management may not approve this transaction. So, but on the flip side, if the well is doing great, then management will approve. So here you are as a landowner under this scenario where you sign on January 1st and this company is sitting back watching what develops and deciding whether they want to finalize the transaction. And if they don't like what they see, they don't finalize the transaction maybe. Uh, that's a bad situation for you as the landowner. You're essentially giving them this option, and in this scenario I'm describing, a window to look in a uh, window of time and a visual window to look in to see what's going on if production is occurring to say oh wow this is a monster well this is a great deal for us let's finalize it let's get it done or wow this ends up being a really bad area we've offered too much money let's not approve this one and we'll look to the next who doesn't like having an option I mean think about that don't we wish as landowners we had options? Uh, you know, you don't see <laughs> you don't see these agreements as landowner option agreements. You see them as company option agreements. So these companies, what do they want to do? Invest the least amount of money up front, and then have an option to decide if they want to use the agreement, whether it be one of these sales agreements, a pipeline agreement, a storage agreement, whatever. We can go on and on and on. Option agreements favor the companies understand why they need them, why they want them, but they favor the companies. But there are things that you can do. As with all of these agreements, there's things that you can do to make them more beneficial for you, the landowner. But you need to know how to do them. You need to understand how to evaluate your leverage. And in these sales agreements with these companies that want to buy your oil and gas rights, you as a landowner, in my opinion, need to negotiate that document and more important we say negotiate what I mean is you need to change that sales agreement you cannot and should not sign a sales agreement that completely favors the company or individuals that want to purchase your gas rights these guys girls companies are making enormous profits and will make enormous profits from landowners by buying oil and gas rights. By having landowners uneducated in these subjects, could be a very smart person, but uneducated in this area and be taken advantage of. I mean, my heavens, uh, there's a lot of people out there making and going to make a lot of money because they've dealt with uninformed landowners and the landowners are going to lose that money 
and it's going into the pocket of these people who have more experience, a better understanding, and understand how to manipulate these situations. They've done it before in other states. They've been doing it in Pennsylvania, and they're continuing to do it in Pennsylvania. You know, it's interesting. I talk to a lot of people, uh, a lot of people, a lot of different uh, clients, a lot of different areas. Um, one of the things that I hear so often, and it's usually at the end of calls on our first call, uh, but I hear it. I mean, boy, it's it's got to be over 50% of the time. I hear a landowner will say, oh, yeah, another thing. I keep getting all of these letters from these companies wanting to buy my oil and gas rights. I hear that all the time. So, you know, if you're listening and you're in an oil and gas area, I'm pretty darn sure you've been getting these letters too. And hopefully, and most people do throw them away, but if it's something you're interested in, you need to look at, you know, a lot of times too, you get a company sending you a letter, say they're offering to buy it at $3,000 an acre. Well, if you do a little work, there's a good chance, not always, but a good chance there's some other company out there willing to pay you more money. A joke that I use uh, times and kidding around to people saying, look, you get those letters, call me. If you're serious about selling them, I'll probably be able to find you by the end of the day, of the day somebody else who's willing to pay you more. Um, and I don't do it, but I'll tell you, in a lot of these cases, I see these landowners making deals and I think, boy... Uh, I wish I was on the other end, the company end, not that I would be, uh, but on the other side of that, because I can see how much money that the other side is going to make and what future money the landowner is going to lose, most likely. Look, very rarely are any of these things guaranteed, but the probabilities are extremely high. I am Attorney Doug Clark. You're listening to All Things Marcellus here every Sunday from 8 to 9 on these stations talking about uh, oil and gas rights and selling oil and gas rights. And again, I've talked about this in other shows, but I want to really stress there are so many pitfalls. That sales agreement, if you have not, if you're thinking about selling your oil and gas rights, I'll just say this. I would highly recommend that we have a consultation. Take an hour or two, send me your lease, send me the sales agreements, and let's talk. I don't care where you are. I don't care if you're in Alaska and you have Pennsylvania property, Hawaii. I don't care where you are, anywhere in the country, eastern Pennsylvania, western Pennsylvania. Um, send me all I need. Most times, all we need is your lease and we need your uh, the sales agreement. I don't even necessarily need the sales agreement, but give me your lease. Give me the sales agreement. Shoot me out the letters, and let's have an hour conversation, and let's talk about, okay, here's what you got. Here's what the potential problems are. Here's the good things. Look, what's the good thing? Money. That's the good thing. The good thing is money. What are they promising you? Let me tell you this. You can sit there and say, hey, uh, I'm going to give you a million dollars if you do this. Well, million dollars, that sounds great. However, if they don't give you that million dollars, well, that's not so great, is it? So we want to make sure that you understand everything. And if you're going to make a decision to move forward with this type of transaction, you need to do it with full information because you're giving away your rights. Not giving, but selling your rights forever, forever, forever. So take the time take the time. Sorry to make this a commercial, but I'm going to just say, look, call me 570-307-0702. I do those consultations. Uh, highly re recommend doing that. You know, another thing, well, I'm on that about consultations. Another thing I've been doing a lot recently too is, is with these FERC interstate lines. Uh, we've been doing more and more consultations where landowner gets, you know, and this is all across the state as well, uh, are presented with these um, pipeline right away agreements for these interstate transmission lines where they're going to apply or the company is applied to FERC, which is the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. And there is most likely in almost all of these cases going to be the authority granted eventually and sometimes sooner, depending upon the project for the company to have the power of condemnation and eminent domain. So what do we want to do? Let's have a conference. Let's have a consultation. Uh, I say this, you hear me say this all the time. You don't want to sit there and have legal representation that's going to over, you know, it's going to take over the compensation or eat away at a large part of that compensation. So what do we want to do? Let's maybe have a con or I'm sorry, compensation, what you're going to be paid. But what do we want to do? We want to have a consultation. Let's talk about, you know, what we've seen, what we can maybe do. 
uh, formulate a strategy and if you need more assistance well let's go from there if you have the information you need well now you have more information don't be afraid to call and be informed you have to be informed I am attorney Doug Clark you can always contact me 570-307-0702 570-307-0702 and I do the radio show every single week from 8 to 9 a.m. and it will be up at pagasleaseattorney.com tomorrow and I'm going to be right back. We got one more segment left. I'm going to be right back after this break. Stay tuned. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark. Remember, tomorrow morning, Monday morning, we will have today's show up at pagasleaseattorney.com. That's pagasleaseattorney.com. If you miss any of today's show, a bunch of other, many other hours of archived radio shows available at pagasleaseattorney.com and also check out pipelineattorney.com for great landowner information. Uh, I am an attorney for landowners and only landowners and we're trying to get you as the landowner educated and informed to make the right decision for every decision that you make relative to natural gas development and related issues. So check out the websites if you need representation, you can contact me at 570-307-0702, 570-307-0702. I try not to make the show um, too commercial-like, um, but you know, I talked about that last time. If you if you are if you are looking and seriously considering selling your oil and gas rights, and it may be right for you, I would highly recommend give me a call 570-307-0702. Let's have a consultation. Let's talk about it. Let's decide. Like, let's get you informed. Let's make sure that you're looking at some of these loopholes and let's make sure that you're comfortable with them. I find myself saying to people very often and clients, hey, look, uh, I haven't seen the perfect lease. Um, I'm pretty confident uh, I never will see the perfect lease. So what do we need to do? We need to understand why this document isn't perfect. What are the problems for you, okay? And then we say, well, and we recognize here's where the weaknesses are. We recognize here's where you may be disappointed in the future, where you may come back and say, wow, uh, there's deductions being taken from my royalties. Or, well, they sent me the check in my name and, the, and my bank's name. Uh, but you thought about those things, you knew those things, and you ultimately decided, well, those are the negative. What is the positive? Well, the positive was maybe you got two or three thousand dollars per acre as a bonus. Maybe you sold your oil and gas rights for a half a million dollars and you got that money. So we got to weigh these things out. I represent clients and landowners who the vast majority of them ultimately enter into agreements. Do they all? No, but the vast majority do. And then what I do too from the beginning, from the beginning is, okay, what direction? We need to identify what what are your goals and what direction is this going to go? And if I don't think that we're going to have an agreement or that you have as the client landowner some threshold, some primary issues, um, say it's a compensation demand. You say, look, I'm never going to agree to this pipeline right away agreement, this surface agreement, whatever that agreement is, unless I get $100,000 minimum. Well, that's going to be a threshold issue for you. Well, what do we do? We tackle that first. We're certainly not going to work on the language and the details of the agreement. No, we're going to work on that threshold agreement. And in those cases, we say, hey, company, uh, this landowner, they're not going to do this at $40,000. They want $100,000, no less. A company says, not going to do it. Well, you say, okay, fine, um, landowner's going to pass. But if something changes, let me know. So what does that mean? Well, that was a short amount of time spent with the landowner and not much of a legal bill then. If legal bills go higher, whether it's me or anyone else, is how it should be, uh, the reason why you have a larger legal bill, a couple of reasons. Um, the biggest reason is gonna be, well, is that there's more work involved. Well, why is there more work involved? Maybe it's a more complicated transaction and you needed to have more work to make sure that you're getting a better 
agreement, a better agreement, whether that be financial compensation or whether that be terminology or language in the agreement. So if more time is spent on a case or on a file, well, you should have more results in one of two ways, compensation uh, and terminology or language. And if you can't do better, if it becomes clear that, hey, this is it, and I think a good attorney determines that as quickly as they can, say, all right, well, here's where we are. Uh, is it worth spending any more money? I have conversations with clients all the time. Look, I think if we continue to go back and forth, we're spinning wheels. And what's that going to mean? That's going to mean me as the attorney spends more time, which means you as the client are going to spend more money. But a truthful analysis of this is, hey, look, I don't think it's worth you paying me more money because I don't believe that no matter what I do, we're going to see results that are going to justify that expense. So a good attorney is going to do that for your client. You're going to explain to them, hey, look, here's what we need to do. Uh, a lot of times in some of these gas leases nowadays, they say, here's what we got. We got this. I know what they've done in the past. I know what they've done recently. Think we can do better. Let's really focus and concentrate as to what we want to try to improve. We'll go back and forth with the company. And a lot of times we only need to do that one time or maybe twice. And then we have another conversation and say, look, okay, here's what we have. Here's where it's still weak. And we'll talk about things, you know, where it's things or agreements are weak. But here's where it's still weak. I don't see this ever improving. You know, I can sit there and we could pound our head in the wall and, and go back and kick and scream and beg, but it's not going to improve. Or, hey, it's weak here. Uh, we're close to where we want to be. And I think in this case, it's probably worth spending a little more time to see if we can kind of clean this up. We also want to look at the whole cost benefit analysis. How much is this going to cost in time, effort, and money, and what is the potential benefit that you're going to receive? If it's not going to cost very much money uh, and the benefit is going to be big, then you know, we want to maybe do that. But there's one other factor in that analysis as well. We have the cost, we have the benefit, but how likely is the benefit? So if the benefit is something that's going to be spectacular, it's going to be a million dollar benefit, but the chances of getting that benefit are almost zero uh, and literally almost zero. Does it even make sense to spend another hour or two asking for something that's never going to change? Like as simple as this, and this is, I mean, this is extremely simple. Usually we're talking about royalty and royalty calculation language in much more um, detailed terms. But look, here's a great way to illustrate it. I want to have 20% royalty. Okay, yeah, that's great. I mean, everyone wants to have 20% royalty unless, of course, you can get higher royalty. So you say, well, companies offer me 12.5% royalty, maybe 15%. Let's go and ask for 20% royalty. Well, we asked for 20. They say no. Uh, we're aware that in this area, in this county, and with this company, they haven't ever paid 20% royalty ever. And in fact, maybe they've never paid, to our knowledge, anywhere above 15 16%. Does it make sense to keep going back and back and forth trying to get 20% royalty? Well, probably not, because you're not going to see that. So what do you do? You say, okay, the company's offering me 15% royalty. Uh, I want 20%. There's a big gap there. We know that the company has never paid anyone 20% in this county, uh, this township, but let's say this county before, um, based upon a lot of information. So does it make sense to actively negotiate this point? Or we say, all right, landowner, here's the situation. Uh, I don't see this changing. We can sit there and go back and forth. It's going to cost you money. We're going to spin wheels, and I don't believe you're going to get any benefit. But if it did go to 20, your benefit would be extremely significant. Um, so when we do a cost benefit, yeah, maybe it doesn't cost a lot, and the benefit is you know enormous. However, the likelihood of obtaining and achieving that benefit is pretty much zero at this point. So why do it? And you have that discussion. You say, okay, let's not do it. So what do you do? Well, then you say, look, no agreement is perfect. Uh, I don't like a lot of things here. I like some things here. 
I'm looking at this and I know that in the future, uh, prices may go down, they may go up, who knows, but we see more of a downward trend. In the future, there's not gonna be more competition from other companies based upon what we can observe as development in this region. So we look at all those, those items and we factor all those in and you as a landowner do this and we help you, I help you through this and, and we have a plan together and you say, okay, well, um, don't see this thing getting any better, so what do we wanna do? Well, here's your choices. You can go ahead and move forward and enter into the agreement fully informed, understanding where it's weak, where it's strong, um, and deciding that, hey, I recognize the weaknesses, but I think it's the best thing for me, and I think it's only gonna get worse in the future. Or you can say, okay, well, uh, you know what? I just don't like it. I have too many problems with these areas, and I understand the potential of going down and up and all those things in the future. I'm gonna just go ahead and hold off for now. But I'm gonna let the company know, hey, here's where my sticking point is. Uh, if you give me 20% royalty, I'm ready to sign anytime. Here's my number, give me a call. Uh, now, that's a big gap, you're probably not gonna see that, but that's one way to do it, you just go ahead and wait, or you just simply decline. Uh, but you do whatever you do with full and complete and total information and with assistance, and that's the key. A smart, informed, intelligent landowner with great information is always gonna make the right decision. All right, you've been listening to All Things Marcellus with me, attorney Doug Clark here every Sunday from 8 to 9 a.m. I'll be back next week. We'll have the show up on pagasleaseattorney.com tomorrow morning. Contact me directly at 570-307-0702. Have a great week, everyone.